Good morning, everyone. I'm Jun Yan, a professor of uh, statistics at UConn. On behalf of the organizing committee, I'd like to extend the well warmest welcome to all of you to the 2020 UConn Sports Analytics Symposium, UC SAS, hosted at UConn, a world-renowned school for college sports. There are many sports analytics conferences. Why this one? Our distinctive feature is the focus on students, the future workforce of sports analytics. Our conference is de designed to be accessible in terms of technical level, cost, and space to students and all. Our missions are to showcase sports analytics to students at an accessible level, train students in data analytics with application to sports data, and foster collaboration between academic programs and the sports industry. Being virtual this year gives more power to our conference. As of this moment, we have uh, over 300 registrants, which is about three times of the size last year. We have a packed program ahead. Four special guests will give welcoming remarks. The first one is Dr. Carl Lijue, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, University of Connecticut. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Li Jue. Carl? Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so welcome virtually to UConn, a, a top 25 public university that excels in the student experience research to drive discovery and further expand that student experience and a world-class sports program that draws students to UConn, keeps our alumni connected and supports uh, the state of Connecticut in so many important ways. I wanna say congratulations to the Statistical Data Science Lab at UConn and, and Dr. Yan for pulling together the 2020 UConn Sports Analytic Conference. As he mentioned, there are some, some really unique and special aspects about this conference, uh, particularly, and this also connects with what I had said about, you know, the mission and, and vision of our university is the way in which the conference is unique in its focus on students. And this includes excellent posters and, and making the conference accessible to students. UConn has, you know, a really ter terrific statistics team that provides a base for, for us kind of supporting and holding this. And, and as Dr. Yan mentioned, it's a great sports school. And so it's a great place to host this sort of event. I'll just say personally, I, I have a, a connection to this world. I, for an early part of my career, have been a consultant to college basketball teams and, and thinking about the interplay of analytics, but with mental health. And I just want to give you a quick example. Um, there was one team I was working with and a center who analytics easily told us that in practice, he shot about 80% in his free throws and in games, he shot under 50%. Analytics also could tell us that he almost always missed the first free throw and almost always made the second one. But what it couldn't tell us on its own is, is the way is kind of the why. And, and what is maybe the unique aspect of that individual. And it turned out in this case, this was someone who when, when he would get a, a kind of out of breath from, from physical exertion would get anxious. And that anxiety made it really difficult for him to shoot his free throw. So by the second free throw, he had calmed down and it was much more like the way he had practiced. And so it was interesting because what we tried to do at first was to say, okay, let's figure out how to make him less anxious or to figure out, uh, you know, what are the ways in which, you know, we can calm him down. And simply we couldn't figure it out. It just, nothing was working. So then we thought, okay, let's simulate the anxiety experience in practice. So we'd have him breathe into a paper bag, create that kind of hyperventilation and then that anxiety and have him practice in the anxiety state. And, you know, I'll just say, and of course I'm cherry picking, but um, one of the very last games of the season in a victory over Duke, he shot 16 for 21 from the free throw line and made almost all of his first free throws. So mental health is something that's important to me. I'm a 
professor in psychological sciences and and I know data analytics is an incredibly powerful tool and and I hope that throughout the day um, we can just think about you know kind of our student athletes as as people and and the kind of mental health aspect but separately this is really a great event. I'm thrilled we have it here at UConn, and I love when when we have the opportunity to really take several areas of strengths. In this case, what UConn can do in terms of statistical analyses and understanding data, what UConn can do in terms of bringing great partners and creating collaborations, and what UConn means in terms of a great sports university. So uh, thank you for letting me talk for a few minutes and, and I hope everyone has a great conference today. Thank you, Carl. Uh, next, we have Anthony Grasso, football assistant strength and conditioning coach, University of uh, Connecticut. Let's welcome Anthony. How are you doing everybody? Thank you, Doc, I really appreciate that. And I, I'm honored to be able to be here and represent athletics. I quickly just wanna shout out the uh, two statistics interns that have actually helped me with a lot of the catapult and GPS data, uh, Georgia Kasparowitz and Spencer Tibling. Uh, Georgia actually submitted one of her posters today, so uh, it should be pretty interesting to see what, what she's been able to present and obviously come up with. Uh, and just to, just to actually build off what, what Carl was talking about, it's a very interesting topic where you're you're essentially taking a look at and, and my vision of what sports science is is where science in general takes a look at what is right what is happening where what what are, what are the truths behind what is happening and obviously you guys are able to gather some form of data that would would allow you to to take some information in about this particular basketball player carl and, and you can say to yourself well you were looking for the why, right? And that's kind of where I see sport data and, and analytics going, even in, not even just in the sports science sense, but just in general, we wanna take a look at what is, right? and now we need to come up with and use our brains to come up with what ought to be. Right? What are some of the robust protocols and some of the, some, of the, so some of the ways that we can actually create planning and preparation for these athletes to better sort of combat some of the issues that they may take in during that particular point in time. So you guys obviously decided at that particular point in time, let's try and duplicate or simulate this, this particular point of anxiety that he feels. And let's just make sure that he understands what he is going to face when he gets into those particular positions. To be honest with you, Carl, that right there coming from yourself, who's obviously a provost at this university, I can, I can firmly say that that thought process is farther along than many of the thought processes that I experience on a daily basis in the world of sport performance, right? From sport coaches, from whether sport coaches, strength coaches, athletic trainers, whatever the case may be, right? Trying to figure out a way to bridge the gap and really take a look at truths and ways that we can look at the game demands and actually understand what the game asks of these players then coming up with some of the plans that we need to do to actually make sensible decisions, right? So that's kind of my vision for sports science and, and Doc wanted me to kind of talk about where I see sports science going at UConn. Well, what I really tried to push forward and I'm in the process of pushing forward now is creating sort of a, a service platform for basically all of the teams that are, that are prevalent at UConn. So taking a look at whether it be men's soccer, women's soccer, basketball, hockey, football, whatever, being able to provide them with, obviously they have a sport coach, they have athletic trainers, they have a sports nutritionist, they have uh, a team psychologist, obviously they have a, you know, a, a group of individuals, but adding to that a sports scientist that would be sort of allotted to that particular point in time, that particular team to make sure that they had some sort of bridging of the gap, right? Bringing the lab to the field, bringing the field to the lab. And what this does is it would give everybody a chance to obviously collaborate because the training process requires immense collaboration. So giving someone who may be interested in sports science and spends a lot of time down in the lab an opportunity to speak to a sport coach or a strength coach and giving them a little bit more feedback on how they can actually work together and create some sort of universal language amongst all of the people at UConn. Now, with any vision, obviously there are gonna be obstacles, right? And I, I would be remiss to not point out the, the massive obstacles that are gonna be coming your way when we try to talk about putting forth data and analytics and actually getting it to a point where people are listening and taking a look at the actual facts of, you know, in, in my specific realm, I work in the physical sense, right? So we're taking a look at the specific game demands as far as how much ground do these guys cover, right? What are the sport movements that they perform, the competition movements, uh, how fast they perform them, what are the distances they perform them at, uh, and obviously the, the speeds and the different intensities some of them perform in a high intensity fashion. Some movements are performed at a certain amount of time in low intensity fashions. Right? These time motion analysis have to be used to really try to gather these truths. But the obstacles are obviously going to be coming into play when you talk about having an underdeveloped sports structure here in America and maybe in other places as well. But 
I can speak specifically to that fractured sports structure and that's fractured sports society that we have where in any other profession, you're going to have individuals who have all kind of reached a standard of excellence prior to diverging in their separate pathways. Here, we do not really, it's not really the case in sport performance, right? You can kind of just become a coach and you can be, you can work your way towards athletic training. But in my opinion, and, and what I really truly believe is that it is not enough to simply just be interested in your particular realm. And and, and no one is free of this criticism. There, there are strength coaches out there, athletic trainers, sport coaches, sports scientists, who even in their interest in their particular field are not doing what is truly sensible for the athlete. And so no one is free of that criticism, but it is not enough to even just be interested in your particular realm. You need to be interested in the holistic approach as to how every single one of those elements affects every single other one of those elements. And ultimately, I believe that the athlete will be the one that will obviously reap the most benefits, which is the most important piece of this. And lastly, I just want to touch on the theme of, of explanation over experience. So I'll, I'll, going through all of these posters, and, and I, obviously I'm you know, fortunate enough to be a panelist to be able to look at some of the great work that's been done. All of the explanations that were created were incredible explanations, right? You guys decided you get, you went a certain route to try to decide on how you could come to, to this explanation. And when you guys came to this explanation, you decided that that was the most robust defense of your findings, right? So when it comes to sport performance, that should be the case. It should be your explanation over your experience, your experience level and, and, and how long you've been doing something to me. It, it's almost meaningless because I know that if regardless of how long you've been doing something, if I come to you with the whole concept of the best idea wins. If I have an explanation as to why this may be better for a particular athlete at this particular point in time, and my my defense holds up stronger than yours, then my idea should win. And if you are someone who's been in the field for X amount of years, but you don't have great explanations for why the things are why you're doing the things that you're doing, well, I'm sorry, but eventually you're going to be overridden and you're going to actually be pushed to the side because the explanation needs to come through. Um, and sorry, one last thing. I really have to. So the, the idea of hindsight bias is something that we're plagued by in sports structure. And what I thought was so interesting for you guys who are going to obviously continue working forward towards data and analytics and again, understanding what is, we often try to determine whether a certain decision was a mistake or not based off of the outcome, right? We always do that. We based off of the outcome, like, oh, like I decided to go this route, it worked in my favor. Well, that's great. The reality is, decisions and mistakes are made in the processes that led up to that particular point in time, right? So obviously, given the information that you had at the point in time when you made that decision is actually what determines whether that was a mistake or not, regardless of the outcome. And we see it all the time in sport performance where a coach will say, well, we won, so I must have done the right things, right? And then obviously, we know that isn't the case. So I, I continue to implore you to Try to find ways to have better explanations for things and to create more scenarios where you're making decisions pre outcome that will help influence and get you, at least get you a little bit closer to be able to make more robust decisions prior to finding out what those outcomes are. So, um, again, this is a, a very deep topic. It's obviously one I'm very passionate about. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to talk about this. I really hope that you guys continue to move forward and just try to create more robust explanations as to why you believe that your particular work is the best and what can continue to drive everybody in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Our next speaker is uh, Devian Pluler, Director of Analytics, Toronto Football Club. Their team happens to be using UConn's stadium recently. Let's welcome Devian. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I'm going to keep it uh, nice and uh, short and uh, sharp here. Um, you know, my name my name is Evan Pluler. I'm the director of analytics at Toronto FC. I, I've been up there about uh, five or six seasons now, which is crazy to think about. Uh, I'm responsible for the integration of analytics and data science and all the sports facing uh, aspects of the uh, organization. Uh, we're part of the larger Maple Leafs and Sports Entertainment Group, uh, which has obviously been really exciting over the last couple. Of Years with the Raptor success, and, and we've had to bid ourselves as well. Um, you know, largely, you know, what I work on on a day to day basis is are things like uh, player recruitment and opposition analysis, and how data science and uh, analysis can kind of make those different pieces of our organization more efficient and faster. Uh, I'm actually from the New England uh, area originally. Uh, I'm from Gloucester, Massachusetts, not not too far uh, from from UConn. I definitely played uh, quite a few games down in the. Uh, Hartford area growing up, um, 
But uh, because of COVID, I, I haven't been home in about a year. I haven't been home since the uh, MIT conference back in, what is that, February-ish. Uh, so I'm happy to be visiting virtually, uh, if, if nothing else, um, though I am admittedly pretty happy to be hanging out above the border uh, for this uh, last month before before a certain election happens. Um, you know, COVID obviously has been uh, pretty awful um, in, in a lot of senses, um, and but it has made some pretty funny bedfellows and terms on OFC and uh, UConn. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, uh, we have made Rensselaer Stadium our, our home away from home. And uh, from everyone that I've heard from on the ground down there, uh, the staff is really bent over backwards uh, for us and organization and really have made it felt genuinely like a home. Uh, so I do want to extend you know, a sincere thank you uh, from our organization to the UConn Sports Department uh, and community uh, for their hospitality. Uh, but, but I have to say, as an analytics guy, I was naturally pretty suspicious of what the actual home field advantage would be with using such a, a surrogate uh, home field. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if our, our, our two wins and, and zero losses start is a sufficient sample size to really draw any you know, real conclusions, um, but but I am optimistic. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you uh, and, and enjoy the enjoy the conference. Uh, thank you, Devin. Our last speaker is Dr. Michael Lopez. Director of Football Data and Analytics, uh, National Football League. He's the one behind the big data ball of the NFL. Let's welcome Mike. Great. Thanks, June. And uh, Devin, I can assure you that two out of two is 100%. And so that's uh, pretty significant, in my opinion. Um, I'm, uh, I work at the National Football League, and I work in our football data and analytics group. Uh, our job at the league office is to use data to enhance and better understand the game of football. Um, that comes in a variety of ways. That's the competitiveness on the field. Uh, that's the health and safety uh, of our players. Um, that's our officiating, pace of play, player conduct, all those types of things. Um, I think given that this is a conference driven for students, I wanna think back to my days as a student quickly. Uh, when I was a college student, um, we were, uh, I was interested in doing statistics. Um, but at that point, it was the early 2000s, and there wasn't a lot of data to look into. Uh, and uh, at that point, my only real option was to go online and find baseball statistics. Uh, but there wasn't an easy way of getting baseball statistics. So as a result, my baseball thesis as an undergraduate at Bates College uh, consisted of copying and pasting all the players with the last names A and B uh, into an Excel spreadsheet and then analyzing that data in R. Uh, why did I choose A and B? Well, because it was the start of the alphabet for first. And secondly, because I like Barry Bonds, um, who, who at the time in 2003 was, was um, uh, hitting some home runs for various reasons. Um, in any case, the world of sports looks a lot different. Hopefully you wouldn't do a senior thesis with players with the last name A and B now, um, in large part because the data out there is so much more expansive. Um, correspondingly, the opportunities for folks in sports data analytics are much wider than they are in 2003. I wrote my thesis and I got a couple suggestions to send via mail um, to people on baseball teams. And so I sent out my thesis to random baseball teams saying, hey, I wrote this, get me a job. Um, not surprisingly, that didn't lead to a lot of opportunities. Um, it actually took me uh, about 15 years to actually get a full-time job in sports. Um, and, and that's where I am now. Um, the opportunities for students now are, are much wider. Um, I work in the league office. There's obviously jobs on teams. Uh, vendors that work with sports organizations in football, that would be like PFF, telemetry sports. Uh, those types of organizations uh, have, have also opportunities for folks in sports. Uh, Anthony mentioned sports science and working with data that, that deals with players and their health and their, their practice data. Um, that's certainly an option. Um, so I encourage you to consider this as a, as a long-term option. Today, you'll hear a lot of excellent talks uh, and the, the keynote presentations will give you an idea of sort of what goes on in, into into transformative uh, research that, that can help professional organizations, whether it be teams or the league office. Um, on that note, I'm going to introduce uh, one of our data analysts at the league office, uh, Tom Bliss, who's going to start um, with a presentation about how our football group uh, can use data to better understand the game of football. 